It's past midnight. I'm totally exhausted. I'm totally tired. I really don't want to go to sleep because I know I'm just going to open my eyes and it's going to be time. And I dread it. And I don't want to go. I really don't want to go. I don't want to leave my friends. I don't want to leave my family. I don't want to leave my girlfriend. I want to live my life. All I wanted was a second chance. They won't give it to me. No prior record. No previous charges. No previous convictions, sentences. I spent a weekend when I was 17 in the county jail for minor in possession of alcohol. As a juvenile, I spent a couple of weeks out in the middle of the state in a juvenile detention center lockup. And then from there, they transferred me out to the complete opposite side of the state to some sort of foster home and then my mother bailed me out because if she said if I'm gonna live in anybody's home it's gonna be hers not some random ladies and I also spent like uh, I don't know maybe a, a week or so in the heart of Boston when I was a juvenile for uh, I caught a charge when I was a child just a kid. I was like 13. But it was a serious, it was kind of serious and yeah. Not, nothing like this. I mean it was a uh, domestic assault and battery. I didn't mean to but I burned somebody by accident with a lighter in the bathroom on a third floor bathroom in the middle school. I was going to the bathroom and there was no windows in there and the kid thought it was funny and he shut the light off. And I had, uh, excuse me, I had one of those lighters that you could tweak up a little bit and I kept sparking it and it wouldn't light and I kept seeing flashes of the kid running around and this was so long ago and I finally got the lighter lit and he was running by me and I grabbed him and his he just like, I pulled him towards me to see who the kid was because I didn't think it was funny what he was doing. And when I pulled him towards me, his head went forward and it went right into the flame. And it singed a little bit of his eyebrows and eyelashes or whatever. Didn't light him all on fire or nothing like that. It just singed a little bit of his hair. But he ran out screaming and freaking out and made this huge scene. And the police came and arrested me and charged me when I was, like, 13. And that was just all as a juvenile and stuff. But as an adult, I never got in trouble. Sorry, guys. I'm so beat and tired. As a... Pull your shirt up, please. You're, like, showing everybody everything. As an adult, I just never really did stuff, and I never really got caught for, I just really don't want to go, and this is going to be my final video, just wanted to say bye to my mother, and that I love you, and I'll miss you, and I'll think about you every day. Thank you for everybody who uh, has given me support and shown kindness and love and compassion, sympathy. It's helped. Can't imagine how worse it would have been without it. But yeah. It's uh, now 12.20. 
I know if I lay down, I'm going to pass right out, and I'm going to wake up, and it's going to be like 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning. Next thing I know it. And then I'm only going to have like an hour. All I wanted was a second chance. That's it. And the excuse everyone gives me, whether it's my attorney, the DA, or the judge himself, everybody's excuse and answer is, my hands are tied. The amount of weight makes it mandatory. It's... I can't believe I let myself get to the way that I did and how how bad things got. I can't believe how stupid I was seeing the things that I seen, hearing the things that I heard and still continued to do it, blinded by money and stupidity, greed I guess. Even when I wanted to stop, and I kept telling the person that was supplying me that I wanted to stop, he just kept showing up at my house. He'd walk right in my door. Wouldn't even knock. He just kept bringing the shit and bringing the shit. And he knew I had the money for it. And he knew once it was there that I wouldn't pass it up. I'd take it. Because within a day or two, I could get rid of it. And it, I could make Ten grand. It's sickening. And it makes me so mad that I got involved in it. And I would have never got involved in it if I wasn't an addict. If I never started doing stupid shit when I was a child growing up and around here. Started when I was like 12 years old. Started smoking joints. Then I started sniffing prescription pills, whatever I could get, whatever my friends could get. Not anything, but claw pins and cake cuts and, you know, they started getting into, like, ketamine and stuff. I didn't like things that made you dizzy or anything like that or could fuck you up, like, certain things like that. So I never did that, but me and my, my crew and shit, we'd get started getting into acid and mushrooms and cocaine and more prescription pills and next thing you know we're like 15 16 then 17 hits and then the oxycontin started getting really fucking huge and then it ripped off and tore and fucking lit like a wildfire soaked in gasoline and this area is destroyed ever since oxycontin was expensive it was everywhere and next thing you know I mean, heroin was always around, but it's just like everybody that did them all transitioned. Better high, same high, cheaper, lasts longer. And you're already addicted because you're doing the oxys. Sucks you right in. Whether you shoot it up or you take your first little tiny, little tiny, little tiny rimp of a fucking line. And you'll probably take it because it will look so pathetically small and mean, meager. You're like, oh, I could take that. That's fucking nothing. If I don't like it, I'll blow it back out my nose. And that little fucking line will do more than half of that whole Oxycontin pill would do all together. And you just fall instantly in love. And it will ruin your whole life. And now look at me now. I'm going to be turning 29 years old this month. And I'm going to be in a fucking state prison. Suffering. Sick. I'm so angry. I'm so angry at myself. That I did this to myself and my family. And I can't say that I'm sorry enough. This will be my final video. This will be my final upload. I wanted to talk for about 10 minutes. I'm going to do a few dabs for you guys. And probably do a few pauses so I can actually get a few dabs in. Let's do this. 
so sorry everybody that this has happened and that I have to leave and that things turned out the way that they did. So sorry. Cheers to the Toro mini mini Toro whatever. On other words and in other things, whoever it was who gave that last video of me spending the day with my father for his birthday, the last birthday that I'll be with him for years, whoever gave that video a thumbs down, you obviously have no clue about anything that's going on. And you have no fucking heart at all. And I just like to say fuck you and you're a real piece of shit. That's all. There ain't no hate in this video, but that right there, it angered me that somebody would fucking have the nerve to do that. And just wanted to say you're a real piece of shit. And I hope you watch this video. <clears throat> Sorry if you don't maybe care about your family. As much as I care about mine. I'm sorry. Cheers, everybody. So I was going to try and squeeze in more dabs, but I'm just so beat and exhausted. These dabs are just going to knock me out, and I really, I really, as much as I want to sleep, I don't. I'm dreading the morning. I'm dreading 10 a.m. My grandmother is torn now on whether she wants to come or not. My sister surprised me this morning with saying that she wanted to come. When I visited her tonight, she said that she wasn't. And then by the time I left the house, she said she'll, she doesn't, she's not sure and she'll, she'll let me know in the morning. But either way, I'm still going to stop by there in the morning and say my final goodbye to my grandparents. And I hope to God it's not the last time I see them. Because they're old and they're not going to come visit me in a state prison. And I kind of told them that tonight too. That it would absolutely kill me and crush me if the last vision of them seeing me was being shackled and taken away. I told them I, it, I wouldn't be able to live with that. I would never forgive myself. <clears throat> so she's going to let me know in the morning whether she comes. I told her I wouldn't... I wouldn't... Be, either way, I'm okay. My grandfather will not be going. If she goes. <clears throat> she says if she ends up not going... She's just going to stay home and pray. But I'm coming towards the end of this video. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who's ever done anything for me. Thank you for all the support, people. And I'll be back in a few years. I love you all. And I'm so sorry that this happened and I brought all of this down on everybody. Cheers. <laughs> just please remember you guys will all be constantly daily in my thoughts and prayers and I hope I will be in yours too and uh, as soon as I'm good and better and ready I'll be writing to you all love you guys all have a good night